In the best of the rest of the news, more bad news coming from the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan. While speaking to Swiss lawmakers last month, Japan's former ambassador to Switzerland, Mitsui Murata, warned that if the building housing reactor 4 at that plant at Fukushima were to collapse, as many officials fear might happen, it would lead to a global catastrophe like the world has never seen before. As Reader Supported News reports, a former official with the U.S. Department of Energy commented on the consequences of a building collapse around Reactor 4, saying, if an earthquake or other event were to cause this pool to drain, this could result in a catastrophic radiological fire involving nearly 10 times the amount of cesium-137 released by the Chernobyl accident. And if that fire were to consume the thousands of other radioactive spent fuel rods at the Fukushima plant, then the radiological event could be 85 times greater than the Chernobyl disaster. So just how dangerous is the situation still at the Fukushima plant, and what are the consequences for the United States? Kevin Camps is back. He's the nuclear waste watchdog at Beyond Nuclear. Kevin, welcome back. Thank you, Tom. Great to have you. Thank you. Um, first of all, we were talking before we went on the air, and I learned something. I thought I knew a lot about nuclear waste and power. Um, you said that nuclear fuel, before it's been run through a reactor, is not so dangerous as afterwards. Well, that's true. Uh, once nuclear fuel goes into a reactor and is irradiated and uranium atoms are split, it's a million times more radioactive than when it went in as fresh fuel. Even when it's fresh fuel, it's radioactive, it's a toxic heavy metal, it is a very dangerous material. And so they actually wear radiation suits and gloves and the works, but they can work with it with their hands. But once it's uh, irradiated in a reactor core, it's giving off deadly doses of gamma radiation in a matter of seconds if it's just out of the reactor, if you're at close range with no shielding. It's a very deadly material, and it stays that way for a million years, uh, given the, the long-lasting radioisotopes. Wow. So uh, in, in their infinite wisdom, uh, General Electric designed, if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, um, designed these reactors, or at least some of them, the unit, unit 4, Unit 3, Unit 4, um, to have their nuclear waste stored in the ceiling, right? And so this, this far more deadly than the fuel, nuclear waste is up in the ceiling. The size of the building has been blown out by the explosion. The building is listing, and there's this pool of, of radioactive waste up there. What happens if this building collapses? Well, it would be a global catastrophe. Certainly for Japan, it would be very devastating. It would be a larger radioactivity release than what's already happened there. The melted down cores, at least they are inside containment structures. Granted, those containment structures are damaged or destroyed, and hence the massive amounts of radioactivity that have escaped so far in the past 13 months. But the, the pools, again, yeah, General Electric designed this reactor, not only with too small and too weak a containment for the reactor cores, but with the pools outside of any containment whatsoever. I mean, granted, they were inside a building. That's called the reactor building, a secondary containment. But the hydrogen explosions at units one, three, and four completely destroyed those outer buildings. And these pools are now open air. So if there's a fire in the unit four pool, if it collapses completely, if the bottom drops out and they have steel jacks under there now, trying to keep the floor from falling out on this pool, in a couple of hours, that fuel would be on fire, releasing up to 100% of its cesium-137 directly into the environment. And compare that to Chernobyl? Well, uh, as Robert Alvarez said, in the Unit 4 pool alone, there's 10 times the cesium that was released by Chernobyl. The entire site of Fukushima Daiichi, just in the pools, and there are seven pools, one each at each reactor unit, plus a common pool, which is the mother load. If you add them all up, it's 85 times the cesium that was released at Chernobyl. And that common pool, with the most waste of all at the site, is 50 meters away, 50 yards away from Unit 4. If Unit, so 4, fire could jump. If unit 4 goes up in flames, that site is going to have to be ab abandoned because now it's a deadly radioactive zone. You would get a fatal dose in seconds or minutes. Nobody could go there, and you couldn't mitigate the accident. All those pools would likely go up in flames. Are there any nuclear reactors in the United States where they store the waste in the ceiling? We have 24 such units here in the United States. They're 24 where they've got the radioactive waste in the ceiling? They're Mark 1s, just like Fukushima Daiichi. One of them has been shut down since 1997. The waste is still in the pool to save money on dry cask storage. Holy cow. Is Vermont Yankee one of those? Vermont Yankee is a Mark I. So is uh, Pilgrim near Boston. So is Fermi II near Detroit. These Mark I's are near our biggest cities. They're the oldest reactors in the country. They have much more waste in their pools than any of the pools at Fukushima Daiichi. 
So if you lose primary grid power, if you lose emergency backup diesels at our Mark 1s, it's a matter of time. At Fermi 2, it would take four hours and 12 minutes before the pool starts to boil. And then maybe some days, but that's what happened at Fukushima Daiichi. Right. Some days later, that pool water's gone, the waste is now in the open air and on fire. Amazing. Kevin Camps, thank you for being with us. Thank you. After Japan, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission updated its seismic model and in a report issued just yesterday found that 96 reactors in the central and southern U.S. are in regions at higher risk of a quake than previously thought. Major metropolitan areas are uncomfortably close to major nuclear power plants. Indian Point, just outside New York City, 20 million people live in a 50-mile radius. Dresden just 50 miles from the heavily populated suburbs of Chicago. And if we don't make them shut it down, it's going to be too late. We can't wait for the NRC. We can't wait for the government.